In this video, we're gonna be working with a local surveying firm here in Central Florida to capture over 600 acres of land. Traditionally, we'd be flying with a quadcopter system like this, but today we're gonna be working with Quantum Systems and their new flagship fixed wing VTOL system, the Trinity Pro. And I think you might be quite surprised at the results. Hey guys, Dylan Gorman here. For those of you who don't know who I am, I've been a commercial drone pilot for over six years now, mainly focusing on photogrammetry and mapping all across the country, which is also why I am super excited to talk to you more about how fixed wing drones are changing the way we capture large amounts of data in more efficient ways than your standard quadcopter drones. First of all, what is a fixed wing VTOL? VTOL is a simple acronym for vertical takeoff and landing and how it refers to drones capabilities of rising and descending vertically without a runway. These drones are known for being very power efficient, flexible in their specific capabilities and have the ability for long range flights with ease. They are versatile and can operate in various conditions, making them suitable for industries like surveillance, mapping, and even surveying. There are also various types of VTOLs, such as gas powered ones, all the way to electric ones, like what we'll be using within this video. But let's talk a little bit more about how we got to where we are today with the current iteration of VTOLs. VTOL drones have a rich history and have evolved over the years through various technological advancements. Believe it or not, some of the very early sketches of VTOLs come from Leonardo da Vinci, who envisioned an aircraft with vertical flight capabilities back in the 15th century. Dubbed the aerial screw, it was a human-powered helicopter that theoretically would work. In the early 1950s, Lockheed and Convair, both American-based companies, were contracted to develop vertical lift fighters. They designed and tested aircraft, but these projects were eventually canceled. Post-World War II, the focus shifted to jet engines and tilt wings, leading to the development of helicopters and aircraft like the CL-84, V-22 Osprey, and the Harrier jump jet. This era also saw innovations in VTOL rotor designs, including gyrocopters and gyrodynes. More recently, electric VTOL, known as eVTOL, vehicles have emerged, still based on the century-old principles of vertical lift. As the technology advanced, VTOL capabilities were integrated into unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, to create VTOL drones. These drones combine the benefits of both fixed wing and multi-rotor drones, allowing for vertical takeoff and efficient horizontal flight. VTOL drones have since found applications in various industries, such as agriculture spraying, mapping and modeling, for surveyors like what we're gonna be capturing within this video, and more recently, the use of a VTOL to find a missing suspect with military-capable cameras and sensors. As these tools continue to be refined and made more accessible, I truly believe we're going to find many more use cases for these incredibly capable drones, like some of the discoveries we're gonna be making on our data acquisition project today. So now that we learned a little bit more about what a fixed wing VTOL drone is, I'm about to receive a call from the survey company that we're gonna be working with on doing data acquisition for their project. I know it's a pretty big site, but let's wait to hear from our client to see exactly what they need. How can I, uh, how can I help you? Well, I hear you've got a, uh, I hear you've got a new system that, uh, that I might, that I might be interested in. That I might need to take a look at. Yeah. Let, let, let's talk about it. What, um, what project do you have coming up? Okay. So we've got a, a, a large project that has two components. There's a, a larger piece and a smaller piece. The larger piece is about 700 acres and on that piece, I need photogrammetry, a, a good ortho photo, just for general mapping. And then a section of it is about 350 acres, and that's we need more detail. That's a project that's ready to that they're ready to get started on now. My client is, and I'm going to need uh, a lidar. That's it's a pretty complex terrain. Perfect. And uh, in in terms of timeline, is is this something that needs to be done quickly? Of course. Everything we okay. every time our clients <laughs> call, they want to know how quickly they can get it. To be honest, I mean, we can get all of this data within a few hours of being on site. So I don't think that's going to be an issue and we can get stuff turned around within a few days. Uh, is, is that, does that work for you? Absolutely. Sweet. All right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll look forward to your email and uh, I'll see you on site. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. So now that we know that this client needs the data to be turned around very quickly, leveraging the VTOL drone that we're going to be using today, 
allows us to actually get to that endpoint with very little friction. Before we can actually capture any of this data, let's do some of the mission planning here on Cubase, which is the application that Quantum System uses for their drones to autonomously capture data with their fixed wing VTOLs. Let's hop onto here, take that KML, and also look at Google Earth to do some of our pre-mission planning before we actually go out into the field. Here in Google Earth, we can see we have the survey area. It's relatively pretty open, uh, pretty flat. We can see that there is some elevation change here uh, in some of these areas. So leveraging the VTOL platform, I think, will be perfect. Uh, not that it's not doable with the quad. It's just going to be, again, more efficient using the VTOL for this. Let's go and pop into Cubase here. Cubase is the platform that we're going to be using to do our mission planning, as well as doing our PPK uh, data writing to the photogrammetry photos that we capture with the system. But let's first talk about doing mission planning. It's relatively easy. It's very similar to a lot of the other applications and platforms that exist on the market. This one, again, is just specifically built for the Quantum Systems VTOL uh, drones. So here we'll do a new mission. And it looks like I have already loaded into the area that we'll be capturing. So if we hit this add new element, uh, we do need to define a takeoff and landing, which will be right here. Perfect. And then we also need to add another element for an area, the area that we're going to be using to define. So all we have to do is hit these points right here. And just by moving these points around, we're able to generate our autonomous mission planning area. Once we're happy with it, when we go out into the field, we can see that it's going to take about an hour and 37 minutes. Uh, it's going to take about 2000. Actually, I think we need to do 75% overlap for our processing to be uh, correct here. So we'll capture a few more photos for a client uh, just to ensure that we're getting all the data that we need. But what we can see is the full optimization here, and it's going to take about an hour and 51 minutes to do all of our data acquisition. Now that we finished the mission planning for both the LiDAR and photogrammetry, I'll meet you out in the field so that we can actually go and capture this data. But before that, we actually needed to go and set controls. So I went with my surveyor to go and set one of our base stations up on an NGS monument. You can see here on my screen, this is exactly how we went to find that monument for this project. And then essentially establish that, hey, this is an existing monument. It's there. We can set up our base station on top of it. Once our base station was set up on top of it, we then went around the site and set a few delta triangles so that we can tie our control points to. We have a PK nail set on top of it as well, just to define where that exact center point is. I'm just excited to see how efficient this entire system is compared to using an M300 with a P1 and a LiDAR sensor completely separate. So I'll see you guys out in the field. All right, so now that we're back from the field, let's go and process all of the data that we captured, both from the photogrammetry flight that we did alongside with the LiDAR that we did. First, we're going to start with the photogrammetry. Uh, before that, let's take a look at the raw images that were captured off of the 42 megapixel sensor that we used, and then talk about how to actually process the data. So first, let's look here on the desktop and take a look at the images that were captured, just the raw photos themselves. So we can see really high resolution detail here. I mean, you can easily pick out the arrow here within this parking lot and then even some of these dirt mounds uh, here in the grass. Now let's talk about what these logs are. So all of these logs are generated from the drone itself so that it, basically what's happening is as the drone's flying through the sky, it's recording its trajectory. It's recording its position as it's flying through the sky. None of this metadata is being written to the images at all. However, this log is capturing the exact position and the exact time that the camera took the photo. Now, there is this PPK module that 
it's essentially just a little GNSS device that sits on site, captures a Rhinex file, and then you're going to be using that to do your PPK processing. However, if the state that you live in, which I happen to live in Florida, and they have a free cores network that I can access, I can download the Rhinex file from the core station that was in the vicinity of the data that I acquired, really the region that I required. So once you have your Rhinex downloaded, your log file ready and all of your images ready to go, what you're gonna do is open up Cubase. You'll be here on the homepage. You click on tools and you'll do post-processing here. And then however many logs you have, you'll select them and create their own individual tab. So here we'll click on select flight log and we'll navigate over to our logs folder here and I will select this log 97, hit open. And then the next thing that we're going to do is select our image directory. So I know that this is log 97 that I created. We'll select it and we'll see 310 of 310 photos are created. And then we're gonna do our precise positioning, which is this is our PPK file. So we'll click on that. And you can either pull directly from it, which you can actually see, or you can pull in a local file. We'll select our local reference here click add file. We'll select that 230 file would open and we'll keep all of this here. And the last thing that we want to check is do geotagging. So that actually writes to those folders. The last thing that we want to do is select an output directory. So I will create a new folder here. We'll select that folder and we'll hit ready and then start. And this honestly happens really quick. Uh, depending on how many photos there are. Obviously, this is a 310 photo segment. In total, we did about 3,300 photos in total. So however many logs there are and the photos that are equated to that log is what you're going to be using to dump into and do all the PPK processing. As for doing your photogrammetry processing, I'm gonna be using Pix4Dmatic here. We are actually taking a look at what that final output orthomosaic looks like and probably like, where, where's the rest of the map? I'm actually zoomed in quite a bit, so I'm going to scroll all the way out to show you exactly where we are. And you can see the tremendous amount of data that this is able to capture, but also generate here. I ended up cutting out this segment here as I, we didn't care too much about this area. Uh, our LiDAR was actually just this segment over here, which I'll show you here shortly. But you can see that with that 42 megapixel resolution, flying at 350 feet, we're able to easily pinpoint where our delta triangles are for our control points alongside with just immense amount of resolution. I mean, we can even pick out the trash bags that are in this trash bin uh, in this residential area. And it only took about 16 hours to process all this data, which I know with my P1 setup, that data took about 30 something hours to fully process. So you're basically saving an entire day and a half worth of processing by having a more efficient method of capturing this data. So I'll make this file downloadable so that you guys can take a look at it, but let's go and take a look at what the LiDAR data set looks like as well. This is our final output for the data that we captured. And man, it actually looks really good here. We can see all of the vegetation. We even see some of the ground beneath the vegetation too, which uh, I always find very impressive as that's essentially what you're leveraging LiDAR for, is capturing a dense amount of data to be used for vegetation penetration and really finding where that true ground is on topo capture, which this is exactly what our client needed. They needed a full understanding of what the topography looked like on this 400-ish acres pieces of land. Doing this traditional way would have taken weeks to do. We were able to pop out a 45-minute flight with LiDAR and have deliverables generated in the same day. That is absolutely phenomenal. I'm honestly genuinely impressed at how efficient this system is and how easy it is to implement into existing workflows. So let's hear what my client has to say about all of this data that we just generated. All right, so what did you think about all that data capture? Man, I cannot thank you enough. <laughs> it's, it's this data is pretty incredible with that being said what what was your i guess mindset behind vtols before the biggest thing that uh that i had not considered getting a, a fixed wing aircraft was exactly what we just talked about how it, it seemed to me like you always need a runway i'm not a super experienced rc pilot as it is anyway so 
it just seemed like a, a skill set that I didn't have, and that I just thought the ease of use wasn't there like it is for a, a quad. But um, I'm thoroughly impressed by by how easy it is to fly that uh, that system. Well, hey, I'm I'm really glad we we're able to do this for you. Uh, hopefully, your clients are super happy with the data they also received, and hopefully, this just made your life a bit easier without having to spend multiple days out in the Florida heat. Uh, this this definitely was a was a fun project to work on. So thank you. As a surveyor, I can say that we're super impressed with the data that that we have back um, uh, coming out of the system, and I can't wait to to see some more data sets and and uh, possibly consider integrating this system into our business. So in conclusion. VTOL systems, I think, are going to be a complete game changer, especially at the price point that the Trinity Pro comes in. At just about $26,000, you're able to get up and running with a full photogrammetry system for LiDAR, multispectral, and some of the other sensors that exist. Obviously, those are add-ons. It would be a very similar cost if you're doing with that with the quad. However, I think with the efficiencies gained with leveraging a system like this, as opposed to trying to just bang your head against the desk and just basically watch paint dry by having a quad system do something similar, I think you're able to get other jobs out of the way done and moving on to the next project, essentially making you more money, spending less time in the field. I wanna thank the Quantum Systems team, specifically Nicholas and Aiden for coming out and assisting on this project. They were such a huge help. If you guys need any resources here in the US, those are the guys to talk to. And if you guys want to learn a little bit more about the Trinity Pro, be sure to check a lot of the links down in the description so you can learn more about the system, who Quantum Systems is, and how you can start leveraging these tools in your workflows today. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. If you want to see more videos from me in the future, which I've got some really cool ones that I've been working on, which has been taking me a lot of time, they're going to be coming out here soon. Be sure to subscribe. And if you want to keep the discussion going, drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear your opinions on it. With that being said, I will see you guys in the next one.